The 2018 Winter Olympics were arguably the most high-tech games in history. From that swarm of lights that formed a snowboarder at the opening ceremonies to those virtual reality headsets that let spectators watch some of their favorite events like they were right there. South Korea also demonstrated the capability and speed of the next generation of wireless technology, 5G. The race is on to develop newer, faster cell cellular networks. Some companies are already touting 5G systems that will be up and running in certain cities next year. But the network as a whole likely won't be fully functional till 2020. The promise is to connect nearly every aspect of our lives over an incredibly fast, reliable wireless network. And companies are spending billions to make sure they aren't left behind. But what is 5G? I mean, it's faster, but how does it actually compare to every other generation? To understand, let's look back. First, there was 1G, the network those early bulky cell phones worked on. Second generation added the ability to send text messages, pictures too, hello emojis. But then enter 3G. It basically turned our cell phones into mini internet connected computers. And 4G made them fast enough to stream all the cat videos you could ever want. 5G takes it even one step further and about a hundred times faster. So how might that change our lives? Well, Renee Filipponi went looking for answers. There's some hands that I There's see. Some hands. There's <laughs> one. There's the other one. You've okay. got robot hands now. You can pick up any item. Now, with, what, what do I have triggers. to click them? You have to click the trigger like that. Oh yeah, my there hands are moving. With a pair of high-tech glasses, you can escape into a virtual world without leaving this Toronto soundstage. Okay, so like what I'm seeing right now, let's say we had 5G, what yep. would this experience be like? That, this experience would be in your real world. So you wouldn't so I'd be, be in, walking down the street. Yeah, you could be walking down the street and you could pick this up and say, oh, I want a coffee. You could order your coffee directly from it. Alan Smithson is a developer in VR and augmented reality and says while the potential for this technology is endless, he warns tech innovation is fast approaching a wall. We've seen an enormous growth in the last few years, and we've gone from you know, headsets that make people sick, we've solved those problems by increasing the frame rates, increasing the resolution, but as you increase the resolution of these screens, of course you have to push more data. That's it, like clicking a mouse. And right now, the networks can't push all of that data. Whoa. If glasses aren't wired, they can only handle small go. amounts of data and perform specific tasks. Venus, and it's like right there in front of me. Penny walks in on location. She has to set up the space for a product unveil for a group of clients. The device maps the room in order to construct a digital map of the space. What you see here is next generation hand tracking. Wireless 5G could make its reach virtually limitless. So I think in 10, 10 years out, so we're in 2028 and Everybody wears a pair of glasses now instead of a smartphone, and those glasses now recognize you. So it recognizes you, your name pops up, so I know, okay, I know who you are, I know maybe your LinkedIn profile pops up. We have um, this camera, which is recording the position of this ball on this plate. This Nokia video shows the difference in speed between 4 and 5G. The three white robots are programmed to balance the ball. It only takes the one on 5G three seconds. The 4G network takes 11. A network powerful enough to safely run a hyper-connected world beyond your cell phone with millions of self-driving cars, delivery drones, smart homes, and even entire cities. But there's a catch. This fast internet travels on tiny wavelengths, much shorter than the ones the current 4G networks work on. That means cell towers or receptors will need to be much closer. Right now, the 4G range is about 70 kilometers. 5G can only travel a very short 300 meters. So future networks will need thousands of mini base stations everywhere, all over a city to relay the signals. Much more complex and much more expensive. Companies around the world are already investing tens of billions of dollars, fighting to be the leaders in 5G. Getting left behind isn't an option. All else being equal, uh, none of the Canadian players are 
all that much more ahead or behind, you know, than others. In the beginning, for the average cell phone user, 5G will mean access to a lot more data. The ability to download things like a movie in the blink of an eye. So much bandwidth will be available, you won't have to worry about going over on your data plan. Today, it's a big deal when these guys give us, you know, 10 gigabits of data a month for 60 bucks or whatever it is. Um, this will be much, much bigger buckets of data, almost that you don't really maybe have to pay attention to it. How did the, uh, For Alberto the Leon Garcia, it's um, much bigger the, than that. The, the University the of Toronto ICF professor you know, works with grad students to you, develop uh, smart and connected cities. We have here something like 10,000 streams for all of the GTA, but the, the target in 5G is a million streams per square kilometer. Per square kilometer. Square kilometers. But I this think. area would have millions, or a million. A million. Yeah. Those dots on the map represent wireless sensors in the roads, on cars and buses, feeding out all kinds of information. Going forward, those sensors will be nearly everywhere. A network that can be deployed uh, densely enough to get enough of uh, the right data uh, to be able to make smart decisions. It's all that information from those sensors that will make a world of autonomous vehicles possible and safe, allowing cars, roads, streetlights, all the ability to communicate at lightning speeds. 5G also has the potential to fundamentally change the way cities work. And to reduce carbon footprint, uh, make better use of energy, uh, make transportation better. Uh, the ability to collect to deploy sensors, collect data, and then do smart things to reduce carbon footprint, for example. Uh, all of those are possible over the near future. And right now, small parts of those networks are already being built. I am in the upper levels of Rogers Centre in Toronto, and if you look up there, you will see one of dozens of new cell antennas installed to support 5G technology. It's what the future of wireless will look like with a fully functioning lightning speed network that will be a reality in some parts of the world in just a couple of years. Renee Filipponi, CBC News, Toronto.